In this lesson, we'll solve two half-life related problems involving reaction rates. The first question reads, molecular iodine dissociates at 625 Kelvin with a first order rate constant of 0 0.271 and the units are s to the power of negative one. What is the half-life of this reaction? This particular example is easy. All we have to do is use the formula that's provided where the half-life is equal to ln at two over k, where k is our constant. So I'll substitute 0 0.271 into k and find out the half-life. Let's go ahead and do that. We have the half-life is equal to ln two over 0 0.271. Now just before we calculate this, remember what ln is. Ln is a replacement symbol for log of base e. Okay. So using our calculator, I'll type in ln 2 divided by 0.271. And we should round this number off to three significant figures. So it becomes 2.56. 2 decimal 5, 6. Therefore, the half-life of this reaction is 2.56 seconds. Question 2 reads, a first order reaction has a half-life of 26.4 seconds. How long does it take for the concentration of the reactant in the reaction to fall one eighth of its initial value? So this time they've given us the half-life, it's 26.4 seconds. And using the same formula as before, this one, we can actually find the constant. Finding the constant is important and I'll discuss why in a moment. So I'll write down 26.4 is equal to ln two over k. Rearranging for k, I'll multiply both sides by k, and then subsequently dividing both sides by 26.4. So ln 2 divided by 26.4, and we end up with 0 0.02625. So k is equal to 0 0.02625, and since this is a first order reaction, the units are going to be 1 over s, which is the same thing as s raised to the power of negative one. The reason why we want this is because for first order reactions, you need the constant multiplied to the independent variable being your time. Let me show you what I mean. So I'll take my constant, this number, I'll replace it with k eventually, and we multiply it by the time, and that's equal to ln of the concentration. So ln of, let's say, concentration a. And that's specifically what you do for first order reactions. All of their equations are represented like this, where the concentration or the y coordinate is ln and the time is in seconds. So let me substitute what we have currently. We have 0 0.02625. And I know that this number should be to three significant figures. I haven't forgotten that. So I'll just put a dot right here so I don't forget. And we want to know the time that it takes the original concentration to become one eighth of its initial value. So I'll replace A with one over eight. So we assume that the initial value is one and by replacing A with one over eight, that represents its final. So rearranging for T, I divide both sides by 0 0.0265, ln of one over eight divided by the number 0 0.026, we get negative 79.2168. Now you're probably thinking, how can a time be negative? It can't. In fact, this should be positive. The reason why is because when you actually graph a first order reaction, the graph, if I show you, this being the y and x axis, so this would be the ln of the concentration and this would be the time, the graph would actually be going downwards. So the slope is always negative. And I omitted that here, but this should actually be negative k, and by putting it as negative k, you wouldn't have run into this issue in the first place. So let's write down 79.2 seconds. It takes 79.2 seconds for this reaction to go down to one eighth of its original. And there you have it. That is how to solve half-life problems related to reaction rates.